Yeah, hello, and uh, welcome to The Last Step once again. Yeah, it's uh, thank you, Kristen. It's been, uh, been quite some days here, and actually Frank is in back in Zurich. He left the south of France, and he's back, uh, back in Zurich. So is Frank on there? There he is. Yeah, if you could pin him. Hey, Frank, long time no talk. Me and Frank have, for those of, uh, those of you who have been following the program, and me and Frank have been really, really connected since our show, since I got here, we started having these daily calls. And like, you know, I always relate it to the 12 steps. It's like the sponsor, sponsee relationship. And each time I would come on the show, it was like, there was the nerves would fall away and everything because I knew how connected I was with Frank and, you know, what he's feeling, I feel it, you know, and right now uh, it's been going through a lot, you know, it's been uh, as soon as, you know, Kristen came on, I said, yep, coming to the hot bed of healing. It's like, there's so much healing going on. And Frank is now back in Zurich and been doing some things there. And yeah, this connection that we have, we've been, uh, we've been really cultivating it. And recently it's been more like three and four calls a day <laughs> than one. Um, but each morning I wake up and I actually can, I've been getting to the point where I can hear the phone ring before it rings. Like I'll be with Jason or something like, I think I have to go. Frank's about to call. And then I get up, I start walking out the door and Frank, Frank is calling from, uh, it was from France, but you know, now he's in Zurich. And so the other day we have some new people, uh, that came from, you know, every, a lot of people came for strawberry and some of those that heard the call actually around February showed up here and have been living with us and a lot of them making the devotion and everything. And we've been going over certain things like the clarity process and just things that we do here in community. And the other day when Utah, we had us all in the sunroom for a meeting. She's like, Oh, we're going to do the clarity process. And I was like, Oh, you know, the first I was, I know that so well, but I remembered back to the first time I'm like, I want a copy of that. And so, you know, she handed them out and we walked through it and I have it here. And um, I remember the first time I read this when I came, it was three years ago, I came to a devotional, a two week devotional. And when I read this, you know, coming from 12 step recovery, I was like, oh my God, that's it. It's like this idea that it is taking it to the next step, you know, to the last step, to the next level. There's something about when I would go into a, a room, you know, a 12 step meeting, there was, you know, immediately there would be this ease because there was this, this safety and the security of non-judgment of people that had been through the same things. And when I read this clarity process the first time, certain things jumped out at me and I was like, oh my God, that's some of my earlier sponsors or people, the elders that I looked up to in the program I was in said some of the exact words, word for word, the way they are here. We have a 13-step process and Nicholas actually has this. Um, and we can share the link into the chat as well. So you guys can see this clarity process. It's available online and Nicholas can actually, yeah, Nicholas, maybe you can screen share it for people so they can see, and I'll just read a bit of it. And then, you know, this is basically what we do for each other every day, you know, as a group, as individuals, this is what me and Frank do every day together when he calls and I call him and the purpose of it, it says, is to give and receive unconditional love, acceptance, and support. Okay, sign me up for that. To create a loving, non judgment space in which we can open our hearts and move through our fears. To learn how to listen to a, from a place of true empathy as taught by Jesus in the Course in Miracles. And this is the one, true empathy as taught by Jesus in Course in Miracles. This is what we're learning and we continue to practice by practicing this process. It brings us into an experience of that. And it was funny earlier today, Frank was calling and going through a lot of emotion with some of the transitions he's in. And there was an idea of, Oh, I may join with this, this other brother from a 12 step program and go for a walk. And he had a bit of resistance because he was like, I'm not sure he can hold the space. And what we mean when we say hold the space is literally holding another brother in the truth, you know, it's the denial of the denial of truth. It's like we want to hold them in a space where we're not going to buy into the stories or we're not going to 
say, oh yeah, that's real or anything like that. And I used to have that problem with certain ones because in my 12 step program, I would go to the ones that I knew would join me in the unholy alliance in weakness. I'd be like, yeah, can you believe this one did this to me? And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And there's none of that when you practice this process. And it was funny because me and Frank saw that today. And then the goal also, the purpose is to learn how to expose and release limiting beliefs and concepts in an accountable way. And this accountable way is like, just this practice of offering them up to, uh, to spirit. And then probably the best thing, the outcome of the clarity process is a clear mind. It's like, okay, again, sign me up for that. There is, <clears throat> when you guys read it yourself, there's a beautiful uh, course from, or a uh, paragraph from the course that you can read. I actually want to get into um, some, of the, some of the ones. That we have 13 steps here or uh, parts of the process. And it's, we will remember our purpose. We'll remember why we're doing it. Those, those bullet points that we just talked to, talked about. And we're here to love and accept one another, not to judge, analyze, rescue, or try to fix one another. This rescue part is the biggest one because this was something in 12 step that you have to realize, even to have a sponsor, sponsee. I can't save them. You know, all I can do is share my experience or any of that, but I can't save anyone. You know, it was, I remember early on or actually maybe it was only a year and a half ago, we were in Tapazatlan and I was part of a, I was with a Mel at the time and we were in this expression session and people that come into it, they're not familiar with it. And, you know, someone shared this really deep thing and another person was like, oh, I, I think I have your guidance. <laughs> like he was about to share. And I'm always praying when I see the ones that have been further along or around for a while, like, okay, what am I hearing? What would I say to this? And I was like, I don't know how I'd speak to this. And Mel so lovingly just turned and like waited for him to finish and paused and said, yeah, we're going to, we're going to let the Holy spirit do the healing. And I was like, I just like rushed with this like emotion. I was like, Oh my God. Like it's that easy. We can't do it. We are going to allow someone else. It's in a 12 step program. I can't, he can, I think I'll let him. And that's what this process actually does for us. The second one is we agree to share from our hearts and be honest about what we're thinking and feeling. This is a time to look at and question the beliefs that block the awareness to love's presence. We are experience a judgment about another when speaking. It's an opportunity just to look at our own healing. This is the mind watching where we can see where it brings something up. We will not interrupt anyone's process. We will give the person sharing our undivided attention and will not engage in crosstalk. This is the part where crosstalk's a huge thing. It's like not allowed. It's like, almost forbidden in 12 step groups. It's like, we don't cross talk to anyone else because it just takes away from it. And this is the presence we're actually focusing in on holding the space for the other so we can hear them so they can release these leaves and we can look at our own mind in the process. We'll take a pause after to acknowledge their sharing. We will not monopolize the group's time and attention. We will stay present and focused. And this number seven was a big one because when I first heard this, I was like, I would, I would go back into it so often. It would be like, we will make I statements, not you statements. We will take responsibility for our own experiences and respect the experiences of others. We will not assign our meaning to something someone else has said. And yeah, I noticed how often I would speak to you. And like when I can actually come from, because it is me, like when I can stay in that experience of always saying, and I watched myself in the, when I would share, when I would speak in groups, how the tendency to say you, when I start, first started reading the course, I changed all the pronouns from you to I, so I can keep the experiences. It's about my belief in the separation, not anyone else's. And it keeps the focus on my mind. It brings it back to where the answer is, the Holy Spirit. We're not going to hide or hurt uh, any, hide or hurt or any anger, f angry feelings. We're going to be authentic. We will share them without trying to make others responsible for how we feel. We're just allowing these emotions to move through. However it looks, we try not to judge that either. We're just trying to stay in this place of this is what's coming up for me. And then ultimately feeling that it's you know, not even about, about any of it. <clears throat> we will not defend or justify our words or actions. We will share any feelings that come up for us in the safety of the circle. You know, this is the defenselessness that the Course speaks to so, you know, so perfectly. We will not bring up past or future unless they are happening for us here and now and we'll stay focused on what we are feeling right now. And this is just actually staying with what's present because the answer is always in this moment. And as long as we can share from that place and not get caught up in the story, and that's what we have our brothers for, 
sometimes in in the safety of a circle it's like bringing it back we were at you know a retreat recently and someone was getting caught in a story and Kirsten so gently was like can you share what's present now it's like always an invitation for ourselves <laughs> like to bring us back and away from where the mind wants to put the feeling is oh it's because of something happened back in the past or the future we will honor the silence knowing that it offers us an opportunity to hear the Holy Spirit and become more deeply present to ourselves and others. That's the answer to our connectedness. You know, this is where we feel that sense of belonging as a result of doing these things. So those are, are basically the thing. And then we will use whatever transpires in the group to offer the opportunity to practice forgiveness for, you know, bringing us back to what our purpose is, is we're, we're always doing it for, for that purpose. So yeah, I really felt to share that when it came up because when I first read this, I was like, okay, yeah, I want to be Nicholas's highlight in the bottom. I will read that now. We agree to honor the purpose of our group to practice the process and to be present. If I can just remember that group agreement, then I can really be part of that. So it was funny that I, when Yuta handed this out the other day, I was like, oh, this is for my show. So I kept the copy and I was like, I could see the, you know, the relationship to the 12 step programs and how I really felt that and how that was a meeting for me to go to that. And even when it was a one-on-one, -on -one, when it was a sponsor sponsee relationship, that was the same feeling. And then certainly me and Frank have been having a lot of, a lot of practice at, at holding the space for one another. I had a couple of days of huge emotion come up recently and it was like, you know, I called Frank, I, Frank, I got to share with you where I'm at because there was, you know, a lot of stuff and it was around a relationship, you know, actually me and my, my wife, my current wife, uh, she's signing up for a green card and we went to have an appointment to just to do the process. And when, <laughs> and when we did it, I was like, oh yeah, this is no problem. I felt some kind of resistance is going towards it. And I didn't know what it was. I was like, oh, maybe it's because like, it's letting go of any other plans or whatever it was. I didn't know. I was, you know, trying to see what it was. And when we got there, during the whole appointment, there was a part where, because I don't have a permanent job now to be a sponsor for someone to come into the country, you have to provide pay stubs for the last six months. And I said, well, I don't have that, but I have this. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, if you could get someone to be your co-sponsor or sign as a co-sponsor, then it would eliminate that. They wouldn't question it at all. And because we want to avoid having him question anything. And, and I had the thought, I'm like, oh, my father can do that. I said, what about my father? Like, yeah. And I looked at Suzanne and she felt like really happy. She's like, yeah, that feels great. And I was like, oh, that'd be great. I can ask him that. And I didn't realize that there was so much more behind it because when I actually started, you know, looking at it, when I, I could see that there was actually some deep things there because the emotions started to come and I didn't know what it was. And there was actually, I didn't want to have to ask for help in any way. Like there was just somehow it was supporting my own belief that I'm a worthy. If I need help, there was so much to it, but the beautiful part of it was when I did, you know, I did call my father and, uh, and to ask him about it. And at the time I, I said it and I had shared it in the, in the, uh, in our group here, you know, when I was talking to him, I, I actually said, I said, Hey, this is the thing. And they want to do this. And I said a line, that I didn't even realize I was going to say, I'm like, well, they want all this information so that they know she's going to come in the country and she's going to be cared for. And when I said it, I just started crying like uncontrollably and I held it back a bit. And my father was like, Oh, you don't have to be upset. And I was like, there was this deep gratitude for even like, yeah, something beyond my words, really like uh, asking for help when I didn't really, there was a lot of blocks to it. But then of course I shared it with the whole group and I cried and I felt dizzy for, for a few hours afterwards because letting go of all these limiting beliefs like that actually and underneath all that was that you know this getting in touch with this that my father really does love me and I, I have such a a fear of, of some of those things that it was it was really a, a deep couple of days for me and you know Frank was going through some stuff but when I was able to talk to him I was able to share that that with him and that's what we've been doing for each other is this, this exact clarity process. And, and Frank's been, yeah, going through some stuff now. And, and uh, yeah, I wanted to really give, give you an opportunity, Frank, if you wanted to just share where you're at or, or practice this with, you know, we have a, a group 
we have a group of probably we're up to 40 or 50 people by now. And this is that gives us an all an opportunity to, to hold that space and do what we just talked about, you know, to hear where people are at. And I know Frank has, uh, has had a lot of emotion recently and I just wanted to see if you cared to share any of that or share your experience with the process itself as I know this has been a big part of your life before and after coming towards, uh, towards us. So. Yeah, I have, uh, well, well, I have to also first express the gratitude that I you know that I have you and to, to be able to talk to her every day and you know the love and, uh, and, and the support of you know the community is just it's just unbelievable um, to go through this uh, I mean the, the thing is I, I broke up with my girlfriend uh, yesterday and she left today is going back to Paris and uh, you know it's something <clears throat> I've been struggling with for a, a while because um, you know there were so, uh, already a few attempts to do that and every time you know I got close to it like this emotion came up and this guilt and this sense of loss and this I mean awful feeling that you know I was taking the first cue no well let's see maybe you know uh, to, 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 to drag it on and and so what happened was when, when we had the conversation the other day and I was um, in front of the Apple store trying to buy a microphone for the show um, we started talking and and if you would have told me tomorrow you're gonna you know she's going to leave, you know, you, you guys are going to spread up. Five minutes before that conversation, I would not have known. So what happened is, you know, with the exposing, uh, I, I just exposed everything. And I, you know, I've been exposing ever since I came to community and even in the 12 steps, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I always said I'm at an advantage. But, uh, you know, and as you expose the, 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 this, you always go deeper, deeper, you know, it's the rabbit hole. And then, and, and, and suddenly, uh, you know, things come up and we say, okay, I just cannot live with that any longer. And I realize, you know, one day I'm, I'm going to have to leave that relationship because it is, it's not serving me or her anymore because my, uh, you know, I, I felt I just have to be responsible for her and be her savior. And, you know, and I do this uh, with my kids and with everybody. But so, you know, it, so, so that after that phone call, I, I exposed to her and uh, I said, you know, I, you can't count on me in those ways anymore. She said, well, you know, so we decided to, to break up. I'm, I'm uh, so surprised I even got this far into the story without, you know, uh, breaking down because I have been really it's been so painful and you know I can see that how people can stay in these relationships forever because that this moment is just so painful and when it starts showing up you know oh, I can't go there and I just try to make it work and, you know and, and and, and I've had it before, but you know, so I was just so afraid of the pain. And, and I have to admit, the pain has been hitting me. Today, she left with her daughter, and you know, it's been hitting me. You know, with, with everything the sense of loss, the guilt, and the sadness. Mm. And I know, you know, it. it I know it's the right thing to do, but you know, it's just there, here they are, these emotions and I have to, I just have to go through them and, you know, and, and the way it's going, uh, you know, for me in this process, being so cared for and loved by the community. But, you know, I mean, in the first place is, is it's God, you know, carrying me through it spirit saying you know i really love you and you know last night i had to go for a walk and there's woods just right outside my so i was in the woods 
And then, no, before he left, Nicolene calls me. You know, she's been trying to get a hold of me, but she just, that, she calls me and talks to me about my son and how she connected with my son. And, uh, and you know, all the guilt I felt with breaking up with Emma also brought up my son. And, and then she calls me and we talk for, and I was able to cry and expose. And, and um, you know, there's that phone call that she's been trying to make for 10 days now. She made it just at that moment. And then I go in the woods and then Sarah and Chris call from California. I haven't talked to them in two months, you know, and being here, they call, you know, so this is, um, and I'm always able to, uh, uh, to talk to you, but also, you know, this was just, I was, I'm not alone, you know, the calls and the angels come in as I need them, you know, mm. but, um, but I have to say, um, I'm, I'm real, really going through and most, you know, thoughts like, why does it have to be like that? Why couldn't it work out, you know? And before the summer, it really looked, you know, after I, I had been in, in, in Mexico for uh, two, two or three months, and then I came back and I said, I don't know what's going to happen when I go back. And then I, I, I saw Emma, and it was wonderful, you know? And I, I said, well, I enjoy the world, I enjoy being mm. in France with her, and we're, you know, I love her so much, and you know, so I was uh, so full of hope that this is going to work, that there's something that's, you know, you guys are not on the same path, even though she's, you know, studying the course. But, she, you know, it feels like since I'm with you guys, it's like I, I'm on an elevator. It's going, you know, like that. And I tell Emma, you have to get on this elevator with me because, you know, the things I expressed to her, of course she couldn't understand because she's mm. not on the elevator. You know, she doesn't understand but it's in her best interest that I stop, that, that I stop protecting her, which I can't do anyway, but to, 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 to live in that illusion that she needs me as, a, as the knight, you know, to, to protect mm. her. And, um, yeah, when you, when you talk about that stuff, Frank, it's, because we've been going pretty deeply into this, and it's funny, it's been, it's always this, it's always a practice of watching my own mind or mind training, and it's like, it's an unwritten rule in, in 12 steps that you don't tell a sponsee what to do. It's always, you just hold the space and that's what this clarity. So people can come to their own thing and you had always, and you've been sharing, I've been avoiding this so long because I didn't want to feel this, this loss or abandonment, which also brings, you know, touched on your son, which was beautiful when you shared Nicolene called showing you there is no loss. Like there was this reflection of, oh my God, there's someone, there's still a connection somehow that no one ever leaves or any of that. And it, it's funny because it was so easy for us to talk about the addiction to people. You know, if anyone's seen the nines at the end of that movie, you know, she sits with the guy and he's like, what are you trying to do to me? And he's all disillusioned. She's like, your addiction is the people of this world. And I was a perfect example. I had people to hear me talk. How many best friends did you have? I'm like, oh, everyone I talk about, I'm like, oh, that was my best friend. That was my best friend. <laughs> like I had so many of these people with these special relationships that I, coveted so much because it made me feel who I was and even when you would start to share about this and the feelings that you were experiencing I can share that even with my best friends or my parents it's like I have such a love for them and by following this path I'm actually bringing them along I'm giving them the permission and it's like I can see that now because I have such a, a great support for them but yeah it was so easy to see to see the, the addiction aspect because even after you know, you had seemed to come to this decision. I mean, I need to share these things I've been hiding. And then this has seemed to transpire. You were like, oh, and the mind immediately goes back to these. Oh, but it was so great when she was so sweet and loving when she did this. And I was like, oh, it's just like, it's just like an addict or an alcoholic <laughs> that comes out and they're in the first two days of recovery, romanticizing that drink. And oh, when it hit my lips, the tingle going down my alcoholics uh, have a different experience of <laughs> than most people but anyway that going down my throat the warm feeling we romanticize that but we don't think about the pain or what it actually did to us or those things and it was funny because when you were talking about those aspects I was like yeah you yeah that's beautiful listening to you and then seeing that we want to think that we do know or you know like you were saying the best interest or or understand it and yeah that's like 
be willing to be yeah, shown. The, 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 uh, well, yeah, the process of actually uh, feeling, you know, of, of exposing like that, of sharing your private thoughts is uh, that it, it is difficult with a partner because of exactly that, that, you know, they can't take it, but that's exactly, you know, uh, that's exactly what was supposed to happen. And I'm, I'm grateful for this process and I'm grateful that I could really go that far and she could say, you know, that is just too much for me. I, I cannot, you can't expect this from any woman and then you disappear for six months and, you know, and, all, and, and, and now it's a process that I'm setting her free. But the ego is telling you, you're abandoning her, you know, you're, and, mm. and so, it's, it's, so I'm, I'm really um, battling these, um, you know, no, and, and, and again, uh, I have all the support, so I'm always redirected, redirected, you know, it's such a gift. Um, and I don't know if I would have had the courage to do this, you know, I, without you guys, you know. And it just pushed it a little further, pushed it. I thought it's going to be inevitable, but there it just, you know, mm. was very supportive. Yeah, you did share that a few times. You said you always knew that it wasn't going to last forever, but it was something that you had continued to put off. Or, And it's, yeah, it's funny because we actually got in touch with you. You did. You were like, there was this selfishness by staying in the relationship or something that was, yeah, serving, serving you ultimately. Yeah. But it was like... Yeah. And, and now that, that all that's gone, you know, the stuff that was, you know, also that specialness and all this, when I, I it's just like, oh, my God, there's such this big hole. And the other thing I want to share quickly is, you know, I've been really on this path by faith. You know, we talked about it before. Yeah. And, um, you know, I feel, I see all these synchronicities, I see all these miracles, but that real, uh, you know, feeling of peace. You know, of, of bliss, I haven't felt that yet. Mm. So, so for me, it's difficult to say, you know, but you drop this and you, you get to feel this feeling. But I have felt it to a degree, but not to a degree that I say, yeah, for yeah. this, I'll, I'll, I'll give up anything. And that's when you said, you know, but you have the faith. And what did you say the, the, that you quoted something? Yeah, the line where Jesus says that, uh, you know, blessed are those who have seen and believe, but blessed more are those who have seen, have not seen and believe. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, we talked about that. So, so that, that was very encouraging. Um, mm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it feels, uh, feels great to feel the... Uh, connection when you talked about those calls coming in and I heard that line that legions upon legions are around you to support you and it's like now you're here with your clarity process with with 50 people and and now yeah the next show from the bottom up Jason is going to be going into uh holy relationship and and this idea of when relationships are mac maximized and even not knowing we don't know like this is why we're trusting the guidance or ultimately hearing it within but it's like, yeah, being open to what, that I don't know. I don't know what the best plan is or what it is. And there's a talk that really touched me at the strawberry retreat. It was um, the enlightenment. Uh, it'll probably be up within the next 24 hours. It was Kirsten and Jason that uh, shared on stage for an hour and a half or so about holy relationship and even collaboration with Nicholas and Andy were touching on today. And this like, yeah, I can just say that I sat there listening to that and it was so inspiring. And so it's no, no coincidence, Frank, that we have these topics in the mind coming up right now for a lot of people. And you're just showing the willingness to express and expose what's going on and saying that we don't know. And that's I actually, yeah, I admire that. So thank you all as always for, for sharing what's on your heart and being vulnerable to share it with everyone because your healing is for everyone. And yeah, so we'll see what Jason has in store for us and he'll have David on the show and we'll get into these topics. And then again, look for that on Spreaker. If you go to, uh, maybe we can put in the chat the, the Spreaker uh, link so that you can see that, that talk coming up soon. So uh, again, I think we're on next week, Frank, so we can keep everyone in tune with the healing and where we're at and uh, see where, where in the world is, is Frank. So, all right.
thank you so much. Thank you, Frank. I'll be talking to you soon. And to the rest of you, thank you so much for joining us. I love you all.